and welcome back to the Beer Ladies podcast. I am today's host, Katie. And in this episode, uh, we're talking about a topic that was kind of mentioned when we did the Reinheitsgebot episode. And we said that wouldn't it be amazing to talk about all the different uh, weird and wonderful beer laws from around the world or alcohol laws in general. So that's what we've done a bit of research and we're going to talk to them, talk about them tonight to you. Um, in this episode, uh, I am joined by my co-host, Lisa. Hello. Uh, and Bean. Hey. hey. Welcome back, Bean. Yay. Oh, it's good to be back. And I'm just going to go through our social media. So if you're on Twitter, we're at Beer Ladies Pod. I think everywhere else we're at Beer Ladies Podcast. We're also on YouTube. You can buy us a coffee at Buy Me a Coffee forward slash Beer Ladies podcast I think you could try that and mm. also we have an announcement we now have merch Lisa Yay! is modeling Woo-hoo. if you see us on uh YouTube um so you can buy you can buy t-shirts you can buy stickers hoodies you know go and buy it and wear it and we'll be like ah oh, we'll spot you out in the crowd and we'll go know that they're beer ladies fans and we're we'll very be- excited I'm very excited. So we're going to start off, as always, with what are you drinking? So I'm going to go to Bean. Please tell us what you're drinking. Ooh, I would love to. Well, the, the better half has stepped out for the evening. So I've got a moderate 3% puka. Dry, oh. hopped, lemon, sour from Whitehead and Sligo. And Ballymote and Sligo and in the and I have tickets for their hag extravaganza. As do I. I don't know how I'm going to get there or any of that yet, but we will figure this out. There's a train, apparently. There is that a train. is all I know. There is a train. <laughs> so, Lisa, what are you drinking? So, I, I am sticking as as local as possible. I have the Hope Amber Lager Limited Edition Number Twenty Six, uh, and as I just posted on Instagram and I think on Twitter. It actually kind of matches our merch. If anyone sees the can, uh, highly recommend not just for that, although, you know, if you want to coordinate your beer and clothes in a sort of Garanimal style, so something where I'm dating myself very specifically there from a North American perspective, it is a glorious beer. Um, and again, color coordinated, but it is, um, as it says on the back, uh, sort of descended from an amber lager in a lot of ways, but it is really, really lovely. And I've been over the past couple of weeks, sort of accidentally stumbling across things that are similar to amber loggers or sort of amber logger or sorry, Vienna logger adjacent. So I, I'm not mad about it. So very tasty. It's mm. very nice. good. And I am drinking um, an Icelandic beer Ooh. because we talk about uh, prohibition in Iceland uh, <laughs> later on in the episode. And it is an Arctic pale ale. And some of the marketing splurge is that it was brewed 60 miles south of the Arctic Circle. How Fair good enough. is that? But then I was looking at it and it's like imported by this company in Los Angeles, USA. And I'm like, <laughs> why? What? Are they just a company who import to Europe, to the rest of Europe? I don't know. That doesn't that's make a, sense to me. That's a good question. Yeah. Did you it, can definitely get it in the States and in Iceland. So good question. Yeah, maybe everything has to go on a big boat, and then they go to smaller boats after they get into the port. Of LA. <laughs> yeah, beer, we're only laws. asking. It's asking possibly questions. beer, beer like import export laws, and then costs, and then it maybe could the be. demand is. I have no idea, but I just noticed that I was like, why did it have to be imported by? Or why was it imported by a U.S. company rather than a European distributor or a? I yeah, know. I don't know. It's there a really go. good question. There or is it go. secretly? Who knows? Who knows? So where will we start off on our wonderful beer law journey? Oh, there's so many different ways to go, but maybe we start with Iceland. Just maybe it was a perfect segue. I think yes. that was a, it's a good place to start because it's such an interesting situation. Yeah. And I have, I've been doing a lot of research on this one specifically because it just, it just caught my interest. So Beer. So alcohol in general was prohibited in Iceland in 1915. That okay. Went well. <laughs> so then, then in 1922, there seemed to be a little bit of a standoff, right? Between the Spanish 
and the Icelandic people. And Spain was like, well, you know what? We're not going to export our wine to you. Yeah, if because oh, no, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna take your cod. Exactly. If it's always the cod. Wine. It's always the cod. We're not well. gonna take your cod unless you take our wine. So in 1922, they changed the law to allow wine to be imported and 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 drank. Mm. Um, and then in 1935, they decided, you know what? Hard liquor, that's fine. Spirits, that's fine. It's grand. Yeah. It's grand, it's grand, it's grand. <laughs> but you know, beer? No way, no way. So here in it's this the this gateway is... ga- gateway thing, the kids that's will start. The, that's and then... exactly what they were saying. And you hear that echoed, like you know, in all of the like the marijuana l- laws around the world. It's like, no, it's a gateway drug, they're all gonna end up on heroin. And you're like, are they really? I don't know. And they afford to. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. I mean, I mean, somebody must start yeah. for people to be. Uh, well, and I then can it's never all, afford that. You no, know, and then it's all unintended consequences, isn't it? As ever with these kind of things. I mean, it's, um, you know, where, where you can just buy hard liquor, but then once you have sort of air travel and so on, you have people being like, right, I am stocking up on my way through the airport. And then people just, you know, chugging, you know, basically grain alcohol while going hiking and stuff because because that's just normal man you know you're like oh this is the only place i can i have to drink while i'm on holiday as much as i can or something i don't know and they had some very interesting debates and i'm just going to read you out a quote oh wonderful um uh, from it just says a socialist mp it doesn't give a name in this paper and we'll quote it in the show notes it just says icelanders do not know how to use alcohol in a civilized manner they are still too much Vikings by nature. Oh my. They get too <laughs> excited and brutal with their, when they're drunk. Parliament should be like a father to a child, knowing what is best for its welfare. Ah, oh, bless. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just gonna, the patriarchy telling us what's best for us. You know, it's like, come on. And yeah. how did that turn out? Yeah, exactly. It didn't turn out well. And then it's like... uh they also said, like, young people start to drink beer and get acquainted with the effects of alcohol. This develops step by step. The effects of beer are no longer enough for them, and this leads them to drinking hard liquor. Oh, but it is which... evident that beer evokes the craving for drinking alcohol. Well, it, it, I think I need the Islamic government because, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Put them in a the corner of your kitchen and be someone there. It'll be a very tall, very fit person being like, no, no. Not today. Not right now. We're not going to evoke the craving in you by giving <laughs> you beer. Because once you drink beer, then you are going to crave vodka, you know, and things like right. that. But instead of, you know, letting you have the beer, it's like, but sure, you can have the vodka. That's not a problem. That's... You can you can drink that as long as you don't crave alcohol. <laughs> exactly. Purely medicinal. <laughs> but other things that I found interesting, and I'm just going to blah, 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 blah. Talk amongst yourselves there while I figure it out. But the amount of um, licensed restaurants in Iceland. <laughs> yes. Was really, really interesting. Blah, blah, blah. So in 1954, there was only one I- restaurant in Iceland licensed to sell alcohol. I just wow. think that's crazy. They had oh. the market cornered. They really did. Wow. It increased to 37 in 1980. 1980. Nice. I was alive um, then, you know, <laughs> 42 years ago. Well, and I, and I can remember the first time I went to Iceland and it's a long time ago now, I think it had only been 10 years that they had repealed it and that beer was legal because beer day was still a big deal and still yeah. celebrated. Although I have to say the beer you could get then was not great. It was available. That's <laughs> well, obviously they they had no not, they had no skill, you know, that they had built up. Exactly. That skill it wasn't had there. been lost. Yeah, it was it was mm. all just, you know, they'd just been getting, you know, Carlsberg that had been on a ship for, you know, weeks or or however long. And that was kind of what the things you would get there at the time. Uh, Egil's Gold was the beer I can remember drinking in Iceland. Uh, oh gosh, 1990s. Um, it, it was not good. I would put it on a par with the beer I got in Israel not too long before that. So, 
places with a very different climate, but kind of similar beer at the time. Not not great. So that's kind of fun. But things yeah, have improved. It, it, things it have improved. Absolutely improved. Too. They have definitely. And uh, so 1989, first of March, beer day. Woo! Woo! You can drink beer in Iceland, and everyone is happy. And you know what? They have done studies, and while the consumption of alcohol has increased, it was increasing before beer day anyway. Yeah. The consumption of hard liquor has dropped slightly, and the consumption oh. of of less than hard, whatever you consider hard, is it over 20 percent, 25 percent? I don't know. Has has increased. So there you go. It was not a gateway. No, quite a gateway the opposite. alcohol drug. You know, absolutely. And I know it's still sort of etiquette thing. Um, highly, highly taxed. I mean, even when we've got the new, um, you know, the the new pricing here, which is is you know a whole thing that we could talk about as a as a ridiculous thing. But you know, it's still sort of considered polite if you're flying in. You just you know buy stuff as you're getting through duty free on the way out and bring it to your host or whomever you're going to be seeing because otherwise it's so expensive to buy your beer from the, you know, the, the local, uh, the, cause I think it is still from kind of the state shop or, you know, it is state it's shop. Still highly regulated, highly regulated. Yeah. And yeah, I suppose it's not the only country either that has like state, not at all, it's, it's all across Scandinavia. But before we move on from this, one of the things, so Iceland got its independence from Denmark in 1918. And there was, seemed to be some of the research I was doing an undercurrent of like, oh, those Danes, they just <laughs> drink an awful lot of beer and we're going to be far more sophisticated than them. So it was yeah. kind of a little bit of a feck off you overlords. We're not going to drink your beer or your yeah. Carlsberg, you know, and things like that. So I don't know. I just thought that was an interesting I, I thing. I think there is a bit of that, even because you can still get, uh, you know, the, the Icelandic, essentially Aquavit is very different from what you get in, in Denmark, um, although they're both, ooh, they're both really strong. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the one you, the one you get in uh, Iceland is Brennevin. It's Black Death, and it's it's uh, um, it's very aniseedy. So if you don't like that flavor, and I do not like that do flavor, not. Uh, it is it is not for you. But again, now there's you've got some lovely Icelandic beers that you own. You you know you've only had an industry of any kind um, for you know twenty odd years. So yeah, what is it with Scandinavians and their licorice? They love it. Smoke they licorice. They love the licorice. Um, I I got a spicy one on the way back. I don't like licorice, hmm. but my husband does. That was my my special gift in the airport on the way back to Denmark. Is look at all the fancy licorice I've bought. So, <laughs> nice. are you a licorice fan, Bean? Yeah. Okay. I There's mean... obviously some good Scandinavian blood in you then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know, but I, I, I don't mind it. Well, now that you're back in town, if you need to come over and, and help us get rid of some, there's a lot in our pantry. So, mm. yeah, we may need some help. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to get back on, ta back, back on topic. And we were talking about, like, state-owned uh, state, -owned, state mm. liquor stores where you yeah. can't get it in a supermarket. Uh, so that's not only in Europe. You get that in numerous states. Well, absolutely. Specifically, Utah would be one that I know about, but you guys, I'm sure, know more. Well, well let's let's we'll go back in depth in Utah, I think, in a minute. But I'll I'll share a little bit about when we first moved to Pennsylvania because it is a state store system, as they say. But mm -hmm. now, now you can buy beer from certain supermarkets if they have a special kind of license, and you know all of these kind of things. But it does create this this sort of unique. Uh, um, almost kind of more experimental kind of mindset because uh, you can only buy beer from a bottle shop, but a lot of the bottle shops are in taps and and they, they could serve or they had to serve, you know, food. And for those just listening, I am air quoting food here because food could be really um, uh, almost anything. A lot of places have like good, actually pretty good hot dogs, things like that, but very basic, something you can put in a microwave and that is the the food i'm getting selling. i'm getting vibes there of the substantial meal that was here it, in yes, ireland during yes the... <laughs> not unlike not unlike <laughs> but that said even though we, on the one hand it was very very restrictive as as a as a sort of method of distribution and from from a distribution perspective too it was back to sort of the three-tier system and in pennsylvania specifically 
It also gets tied in with, with the Johnstown flood tax, which is still on all alcohol from a thing that happened a very long time ago um, and was meant to be a temporary, I think a five year, something like that measure, but is still, uh, still there today. But um, because you had to buy beer at these sort of unusual places, they started getting really experimental and a lot of them would specialize in either local beer or imported beer and the imported beer would be really interesting. So I think it's one reason why in Pennsylvania, the again, unintended consequences, you've ended up with this huge variety uh, that come through these very specialist dedicated bottle shops and yeah, now certain kinds of uh, you know, uh, certain gas stations, certain, um, certain grocery stores, but you still can't just walk into, you know, most grocery stores and buy beer like you can in much, but not all of the U.S. because think of the children, you know, they may, they may see you buying it and then, you know, who knows? Well, evoke cravings for alcohol. It obviously. may evoke cravings. There's nothing to stop you bringing your kids into a bottle shop. That is fine. But if they saw you <laughs> buying beer in a supermarket, I mean, you know, all, all bets are off. I mean, you know, it's it's probably straight to some sort of reform school. But but that's just Pennsylvania, which is weird in its own way. Utah, as, as you mentioned, Katie, oh. has stuff. Bean, you want to say things. Oh, I, well, I, see. I don't want to live there. <laughs> 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 it sounds like it's just way more expensive at the state shop. And it's just over the border. You, you, you know, you'd be looking over your fence at your neighbors. Oh yeah. Going much cheaper over there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and even even in Pennsylvania, you do get that there's a place on the Pennsylvania Maryland border called State Line Liquors. <laughs> and all of these things <laughs> that you can't get on, you know, the other side of the state line. But the the cops will sit there and look look at the license plates. And if you if you make the case that you're going to a you know a party or something that, you know, it's okay, but yeah, they're, they're very, um, I, as I think, you know, in a lot of these things, they're very judicious in who they decide to stop and who they don't. So it's. Oh yeah. I'm thing. sure. I'm sure it's random. Exactly. Random. That's yeah. right. That's right. But again, back to Utah, I think you still can't buy kegs unless you're a restaurant or a bar. Um, and I don't know that that's the only state that that's true of, but I know Utah is one that you absolutely can't have a keg party. That's not not going to be happening so but uh yeah so a uh, question when you go to college university in the usa are there really keg parties yes you see it in the movies it doesn't <laughs> happen in ireland god knows why but anyway it doesn't yeah no it, it absolutely does happen um but it's hmm now, again, I, as someone who was like, you know, very nerdy, I, I would only sort of see it happen at, you know, theater cast parties, but there would still be a keg and someone would be operating it and there would be pretty disgusting cheap beer that would be coming out of the keg. But there, there are absolutely keg parties. So it's, uh, and it would, happens. And there wouldn't yeah. be someone like with the tubing and holding people upside down. I've, I've seen you... it. Oh, I've seen God. It. I haven't done it myself because I, I am not built for that. But uh uh, yeah, I, I, I happen and uh, on, on some of the some of the fancier college campuses in places with that, you know, you're not meant to have that kind of thing, but of course you do. So how about Canada, Bean? Oh, nothing, <laughs> nothing to see here. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> no maple syrup ice. No, no buying uh, booze at the border or... <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> excellent ports to smuggle booze in from the states. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Well, but here. I guess you don't have you know nineteen year olds driving across the border from Canada to the U.S. as you do the opposite what? direction. Oh, no, so. no, <laughs> no, definitely not going. Getting some gas, some beer, coming back. Well, that is a very it's cross border weird shopping beer law, isn't it? You cannot drink alcohol until you're twenty one. It is extremely strange. Yeah. And again, unintended consequences. And the, the funny thing is, too, it's all tied to how they fund uh, the roads, um, because they they would they stopped giving out uh, funding for any of the um, any of the federal highway system basically until all the states signed up to change the drinking age to twenty one. But mm -hmm. and again, it's relatively recent. People think you know, twas 
is ever thus. And it's not really. It's, I think Wyoming, if I, if memory serves, was the last, I think it was the 80s, I think, before they changed. So, um, but, but again, even then, there are things that are different here and there. Like I think in Wisconsin, you can have a drink with your parents at a bar as long as they're mm. there and buying yeah. it for you. Yeah, so. consenting, you're obviously allowed. Yeah, and all all the states and all the provinces in Canada are somewhat allowed to make their own decisions. Like, how much can you import, import, or yeah. or bring? Yeah. You know, so one province might say you can only bring like a good full liter, and some <laughs> other provinces be like, well, that's just as much as you want, but you know, you have to bring it. You can't necessarily order a barrel right. of wine shipped to you from France unless you're a company right yeah oh that's the thing I mean you you can't get in in most of the U.S. and I'm not sure how it's different how different it is rather in Canada you know all like you know I hear if I order from Craft Central and it shows up at my house you know the next day that's not a thing that exists in most of the the U.S. certainly one of the ones you can't get it from another state unless they're licensed and it's all very complicated, even for like fancy like wine clubs. They're only legal in certain states, and sometimes it's only within that state if it's even allowed at all. But it's it's very strict, and um, again, un unintended consequences. It just leads to, you know, um, again, not not that I would know about this, but leads to kids doing you know dumb things and drinking Everclear mixed with Kool Aid and you know whatever in a barn or something. Again, not don't do that. Well. There are places in the world where you need a permit to drink alcohol. Mm. Like Mumbai? Hey, uh, bom yeah, Mumbai. Mumbai. <laughs> I had to check my notes here on my other screen. Yeah. I've heard it's not like super duper enforced, but yeah. You do, you, well, Katie, you have to go down and get yourself a permit to drink. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, if you arrived there and you didn't know when you had a drink, what would happen? I don't know. But... That being said, someone was um, arrested because they were making chocolate liqueurs in their apartment, a lady, Ooh. right? And she got arrested because she did not have her permit to have the liqueur. Oh, I can't be having that now. And it's like, it's not widely enforced, but yeah, every now and again, there's like a case that, that meets the headlines and things like that. So I'm like, but what if? You know, knowing my look, I'd be that case. Right. And they'd be like, <laughs> Irish woman oh. goes over to to Mumbai, decides to have a few pints and ends up arrested in jail for the night. Now, she didn't get charged with anything. She was arrested, brought down to the station and given a few stern words. Um, right. But yeah, plus if you're, if you're traveling from, we'll say, state to state in, in a country, how do you know that the laws are changing from one state to another? It's like, you, you don't know, no. <laughs> And it's like one state, it's like, yeah, you, you're not allowed to carry an open container. And in another one, you can drink outside and it's okay. Yeah. And it's like, or oh. it may be illegal in the state, but again, you know, then if you're in New Orleans and they're selling you, you know, those, you know, alcoholic slushies everywhere. And, you know, and I guess it's in Texas, you have the drive through kind of liquor marts, which does seem like a bad idea. Just, just saying. What's but, a drive through uh, liquor mart? Yeah, it's basically like a liquor store, but you drive up through your, with your car and you can get, you know, things. I, 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 mean, I wish we were on this episode because she would know, you know, being from Texas. But um, in theory, I'm pretty sure everything has to have a lid on it, but I don't know if people abide yeah, like, by that. Like, I get the drive through thing, especially if you have kids in the back of the car and you don't but want you to You may not be in. able to go in and, you know, yeah. I get dri drive, drive through pharmacies. Bring them to Ireland, please. Somebody bring a drive through <laughs> pharmacy to Ireland. It's a, it's a great invention when you're sick and you don't want to be spreading your germs to people. You go up to a hatch. There's my prescription. Please yep. fill it. You know, brilliant. Drive through, drive through um, alcohol shop. Yeah, I could get that, but obviously not your pints and your drive. Yeah, no, that's and... not going to work. Yeah. No. Um, what about happy hours? Oh, those can be complicated. Yeah, and again, it changes everywhere you go because in some places it's illegal to have any kind of happy hour, and in some kind, some places they have to have food, or sometimes you absolutely can't have food. It's it's very very complex. Like, 
where it, it doesn't doesn't work yeah. and some of them are time limited as well like or i know i think was it somewhere in australia i'm thinking sydney's had banned shots or something after midnight no okay. it's gone Rich. it's gone <laughs> <laughs> the law but it was just like to uh to try and um limit the amount of i suppose i don't know beer crawlers coming out of the pubs late yeah, at so, night trying to find yeah. their way home oh yeah no i have a one of my favorite bands who, who and this is sad who have been broken up now for like 15 years but the locksmiths australian band they have this wonderful song called beer nut uh just again a lot of fun where it's sort of detailing a night out in melbourne and you know getting into the taxi and being so drunk that the drift taxi driver is like please don't vomit in my car but it, it, it i'm i'm underselling the song it's a lot of fun it's it's a really good song but uh yeah it, it is that full experience that i'm sure they're trying to minimize potentially yeah yeah but i can i can think that that would have the unintended consequence of like uh quarter to midnight right everyone uh, let's get 20 shots in <sighs> yeah oh. sort of with alien scenes there although that's the one of the other ones where I, I know it comes up a lot if you search on the internet it's illegal to chug beer in while standing so no more than three sips while you're standing up and you know no one can say that they've ever seen this law enforced and you know but it's one of the things that's been on the books you know forever and ever but is kind of meaningless so bit of a bit of a strange one although it's funny the number of things that come up as sort of crazy beer laws that are all uh, from the 1872 yeah. Licensing Act in Britain, it yeah. all it's it's like the like it's like the motherload of you know these things, and it's it's fascinating though when you actually look at it, like how it was just completely designed to sort of criminalize working class people, and you know everyone else was fine doing their own thing, and yet it's still there effectively on the books. So I, I don't know, Katie or Bean, you want to sort of mention a couple of the, the highlights from from that one, but it's it's still there. So I'm thinking like right it was so this was to try and stop people having a beer on their lunch and then going back to work. I I'm I'm thinking so you could like it, yeah. ride a horse when you're drunk. Or a cow, in case that's what you had. So yeah. They're all Although, out there. Or a steam engine. So which again to your point, Katie, yeah. If, you know, you probably shouldn't be operating the steam engine if you've been, you know, having a few pints. That's a, a reasonable I could, point. Yeah, but... I could get with that one. Yeah. I think, I think if the you're... horse would be the safest option. Yeah. And I reckon <laughs> that if you're riding a cow, you've probably had too many anyway. So, come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You certainly have. That's how rodeos you're like, were invented. You know yeah. what? You're not supposed to be on the cow. You're supposed to be on the horse. <laughs> Although I, I did think it was really interesting that one of the things it did do was regulate the content of the beer because so much beer had salt added to it. Yes. And that was interesting. And I thought, wow, if these people had just hung around, you know, stayed alive long enough, they could all just be like, it's a goza. It's fine. You know, but here we are. Yeah, and so they used to add the salt to the beer to make people thirstier, so they would drink more. Yeah, which I think or says something. says so many things about the beer available at the time that people <laughs> either didn't notice or didn't care or... Or it made the beer better. Or, yeah, or <laughs> potentially made it better. <laughs> so I think, you know, as much as we talk about kind of the, you know, the big 19th century industrial breweries in Britain, you're like... Huh, but that was, you know, enough of a problem that it had to be legislated. So that's yeah. interesting to think about. And then when you legislate, people just find loopholes. So instead of putting the salt in the beer, they come up with like pork scratchings, which are just loaded right. in salt. <laughs> I was like, here, I'll give you some of these for free. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Although I love that people, you know, th so there were a number of near riots when police tried to enforce these new closing hours because that's one of although not the only reason that so many pubs in in britain close at 11 a lot of that also comes from the first world war later but uh it's it's interesting that you know before that kind kind of a free-for-all but um again you know even now if it, you know even if the pub doesn't have that uh, kind of license you know, there are lock-ins people break some of those laws or you know or they have a club license but you know anyone can join the club and, and back to utah because again i think we're going to keep coming back to utah because it's so weird. It keeps on but, giving. Um, 
It is a Utah beautiful, beautiful state. I've been there and it is absolutely stunning. So go there for the views and drink your beer in a bar, maybe. Well, we we, we got it in an off license and drank it in the accommodation. Ah, so you were fine then. Yeah, I've never been myself, but I, I know, and again, this is probably out of date information, but I know back in kind of the, the 90s, early 2000s, for a lot of places or a lot of bars, they were effectively clubs, air quotes, and you had to buy... A membership to be able to go drink at them um but even then i think it was I, and I don't know if this part is still true but i i know for a long time you couldn't get anything higher than percent beer and that was like the the top there for for the whole state so which is also you know again kind of a necessity mother of invention there were some really good beers that came out of utah that were you know lower abv that you know had to be good yeah because you know that's what else are they going to drink? Yeah, but you, uh, yeah, you touch, it be fine. I would be okay with that. It could be if, if it's a good beer and it's three percent, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of them are? I I don't know, but some of them. But they also had up until I think 2017 that they called the Zion Curtain. So first of all, amazing name. Thank you, Utah, for providing us with this. So it'd be this sort of frosted glass you know, between the, the, the person at the bar and the bartender, uh, and any drinks would have to be mixed behind this glass, you know, sort of partition effectively. Um, and, and again, it sounds like a lot of the rationale behind it was, oh, you didn't want to see, you know, didn't want to have children see drinks mixed or poured or, you know, because well, it's far too sexy, you know, or, or something. I, it would evoke yeah. the craving for alcohol. It's funny because on the one hand, I think about you know, how it reminds me of like a snob screen in a 19th century, you know, Victorian pub, um, like the lamb in, in, in London still has theirs and they're, they're wonderful and gorgeous, but uh, for a very different purpose. But again, and this is terrible. I'm like putting on my, you know, my archeologist hat where, you know, if I saw the same thing in different places, I'd be like, they must be serving the same function. But in fact, one is all like weird class stuff and the other is weird religion stuff. And they're really very different, but both to not see the person giving you your drink, which is weird. So, it well, is now weird. I guess we all have the privilege of having <laughs> a plexiglass screen between us. And exactly. People serving us. <laughs> At least we can see through ours. We can me. see through ours. It's not frosted. Oh yeah. Sometimes they're a little opaque. And that may just be that they're dirty, but. <laughs> <laughs> And then another uh, weird beard law. It's not that. Well, is it weird? Yeah. Minimum unit pricing was introduced in Ireland. Let's here talk about it. It's weird. Year. It is weird, isn't it? So basically, it's based on the amount of alcohol in a beverage. It has a, a minimum unit price and you cannot sell an alcoholic beverage for lower than that price. So if you have, we'll say, a 330 ml bottle of beer or can of beer it cannot be sold well it'll depend on the alcoholic content right. but it cannot be sold below a certain price so yeah i know that the argument for this is that uh it will discourage binge drinking and things like that but i just think that if you are the of a person of a you if you're a person who needs to drink alcohol you will get your alcohol regardless and you will just end up spending more money on your habit rather than stopping it because just because it goes up in price doesn't mean you're you'll know, just say if someone is an alcoholic it's like yeah i'm not you don't stop you don't stop being sick just because the price of alcohol goes up no. you know and it actually takes the money that could be used maybe in your household for other things i just i don't i don't get that rationale it, it's a very kind of, you know, Victorian moral kind of a thing, isn't it? To, to be having now, it seemed very, you know, sort of retrograde. Um, because of, like we know, like research says this does not work, but here it is. So yeah, it is very peculiar. Although I have another one that's kind of fun. Um, and this is from when, when, we, when we lived in, in Seattle, sort of in Washington state. They have another very strange law, like you can buy beer in the supermarket, okay? You can take your kid to, to most bars. They can't be at the bar because again, oh, what might happen? So the bar has to be physically separated from the dining part of any establishment. So you can go to a restaurant bar or a bar that serves food and bring your kids and that's fine. 
but there has to be a physical separation and that physical separation can just be like a, a red, you know, sort of a red velvet rope. That is fine. That will keep your child from, you know, whatever, discovering the booze at the bar. But if there's not that, you know, the red velvet rope, uh, they are not allowed to let kids in for, for a meal. And so it is purely based on this completely made up um, thing. Uh, and, and again, like it's, it's fair enough if a, if a bar is like, look, we're an adults only bar. We don't do food or whatever. You know, fair enough. But it's weird that the legal loophole is the physical separation can be this thing that's sort of several centimeters thick because that will, you know, deter. Uh, oh, Katie, say it again. Um, oh, that will stop uh, children uh, evoking cravings of alcohol. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. So next time someone's out with, you know, your two year old and you just want to have a family meal where you can have a couple drinks as well. You have to make sure that that red velvet rope is there because otherwise uh, you're not safe. No one is safe. I'm wondering what what else you can use. Like, could you just like have like a delineation on the floor? Like, no, that's not okay. It has oh, to that's be like okay. a three B, like a three D kind of a thing. No, I, I actually asked someone that, and they had gotten in trouble with it uh, because they had just kind of painted around like a. Um, and this was in. But, oh, but the, but the the funny thing about it, the other side is, it is absolutely fine to bring your you know infant, you know, whatever age child to a brewery. That is not a problem. You can go to a brewery tap room that maybe doesn't have food and have them run wild around, you know, industrial equipment. But if you want to sit down and have a meal, you've got to have that rope separating, or it could be a wall as well, but, you know, at least that rope to make sure they're not, you know, running up to the bar getting served, I guess is what we think might happen. Uh, so. Come on, they're going to be smaller than the rope. Just go Hello. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And then that happens and no one cares. And it's all, yeah. Know, but it's such an odd, you know, it's such an odd rule and it is enforced. Like I, I, I have known of bars that have been, or, you know, bars and restaurants that have been fined from, you know, people not, you know, not frankly controlling their kids on, you know, an occasion. And it wasn't, you know, it's not like it's the bar or restaurant's fault if people are not, uh, you know, not doing a good job parenting on a certain day again. But yeah, uh, yeah it's very strange that that is the, the legal code. So. Now there, there is also a law that you can't uh, bicycle while well, under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> and I actually know people no, who have gotten is... arrested for that in Ireland. Oh so, no! <laughs> yeah. Oh, and again, not safer than a horse. I wouldn't have thought so. No. Yeah. No. I think you have to be pretty, pretty like falling off your bike in order yeah. to get arrested for that in Ireland. Yeah. It's very, very rare. I must yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. But um, oh. an older law in France is that they had to have a little mini breathalyzer kit in their car. That's Every so car strange. in France. It's, not, it's gone since uh, 2019. It was abolished. Oh, okay. For obvious oh, reasons. Gone. For obvious reasons. But it was there. And it's like, what? <laughs> if, you, if you've had a few beers and you're getting in front of the car, are you going to blow in and go, oh... I'm just going to have to sit here now for two hours until, I don't know. I mean, if, if, uh, I mean, I can kind of see that. Where, yeah. Like, you should check. Everybody should check. You know, you should take yeah. matters into your own hands and you should see, are you okay to drive? No, you have a way to measure. You had a way to measure and it's the law. <laughs> but if you're a teetotaler, you'll say, or a Muslim family who don't oh, partake yeah. in alcohol yeah. and you still have to have a breathalyzer in your car that <laughs> but that doesn't exist <laughs> we are in france <laughs> <laughs> okay well okay they actually i went to a music festival once and they had breathalyzers the day that the concert that it all finished so that people could oh. check to make sure that all their partying the night before that they were under the limit before they left the site which I thought was that's quite really responsible. Nice idea. Yeah. yeah. I think that's wow. kind of good. Huh. I'm sure they weren't falling off their bikes. <laughs> yeah, although yeah. speaking of bikes, it does it, it does also say that riding a bicycle while drunk can get you sent to a uh, a psychological assessment in Germany if they pick you up. Um, which, you know, again kind of makes sense. I think like it, you know, it, it's better that they're instead of saying, okay you've broken the law, it probably is like, let's find out if you have a problem with this and then we'll find the appropriate course of action versus like, 
here's your fine for your drunk bicycling. But uh, yeah, I'd love to find out what happens in that psychological assessment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, so many, so many questions there about what, <laughs> you know, what goes on. Yeah. Have we run out of weird and wonderful laws? Have we got more to talk about? Well, I'm sure we'll never run completely dry. Ah! <laughs> yeah. well, that was, was weak. Like the liquor that some some Alberta Canada bartenders were complaining about. Um, if so, here's here's the thinking of on either side. So. So this is this has actually been updated now, I think, but um, there was a Calgary Herald article like 2014, 2015, mm. people were complaining that they couldn't uh, make some kind of a strawberry barrel aged thing themselves in which they took alcohol out of bottles, mixed it around, and made artisanal things like they were doing in Vancouver oh. or yeah. Ontario or somewhere, you know, and they were like, we're artists too. We should be able to mix drinks any way we like. And people doing the legislating were like, what is the problem <laughs> with, with some, somebody making a bottle of stuff? It says the alcohol on it. It's got the ingredients list. You take the things you have, you know, your customer orders a drink. You take the bottles, you mix the bottles, you serve the drink. What is the problem? Why would you want to be uh, messing with the booze? And now we don't know what the alcohol content is. We don't know what you've put in there. We don't like, how are we supposed to legislate around this? Do it. So, so they've since um, updated that and made the, the words like more clear, like, okay, if you're making sangria, just make make sure that you have like the date the time the what you put in here you you list the stuff like yeah it it's been updated in like 18 20 21 but yeah people were were upset about that for a people while. people get upset about very strange things don't they people do you know I, I will I will share one one kind of final anecdote about this which is about the blue laws that you have in New England, in, in, in the United States. So they, they are still on the books. So, it, you know, again, we're talking, you know, sort of Massachusetts, Maine, Connecticut, all, all of these places. And, um, you know, originally, again, Puritans come over in the 17th century and are exceedingly no fun. Like they are no <laughs> crack, no, no nothing. So, you know, originally you can't do anything cool on Sundays. You can't go shopping, you know, you can't work, you can't do anything that's not going to church, but you know, you can't even do unseemly walking. That's, you know, very how do bad. You, how do you define unseemly walking? You, you know it when you see it, what well, you would, <laughs> you're not, you're not a man. A man would know. That's how, you know, that's oh, how these things work. Okay. The patriarchy. Exactly, like your, your Cotton Mathers and so on, and your Increase Mathers. And if people don't know about Cotton Mather and Increase Mather, father and son uh, preacher duo, uh, look them up. Uh, but anyway, they're they're fascinating. But the blue laws are still very much on the books. But the only parts that are still enforced are really about buying alcohol on a Sunday. And of course, if you are a university student, Sunday begins at midnight on a Saturday night. And if you mm -hmm. and your friends were thinking about having a sort of session going into Sunday, for example, I'm just, just spitballing here. Just not, not. <laughs> um, there is something that happens at about 1150 where someone freaks out and is like, oh my God, someone has to go out and buy booze because otherwise you, you can't until Monday. And obviously you're not going to on Monday because you have class, you have, you know, all of those things that you have to get to. But again, they are still very much on the books. And um, it's funny that a lot of these other things or you know, you're allowed to do now, but but the booze stuff is still uh, is still enforced. And you know, those parts of the even the convenience store will be closed. But uh, yeah, I'll just say I can recall many a, a late night run to the local corner store with the fake ID uh, and people just buying whatever cheap booze they could get before midnight on a Saturday night so that either the you know the festivities could continue on or 
Maybe there was some day drinking of a Sunday, but um, which again was fine to do if you have it. You just couldn't buy anything new. So it's yeah. uh, it's, it's a whole thing. My fake ID was in Spanish, so that should tell you, you know, how <laughs> how much people cared about these things. But uh, there you go. Things like that have stuck around, like up until God, it's, it's like only five years. It could be a little bit more. It's not long ago though that you were allowed to drink on Good Friday in Ireland. That's right. You That's know? right. Because, you know, we'd all go straight to hell for, <laughs> for, for buy. You, you couldn't buy alcohol on Good Friday. You could drink. I guess, and the pubs would have been closed, but you could drink at home. Was that or? Pubs were closed. And it was yeah. traditionally the day where all the bar staff went and partied in houses. <laughs> so it was the day of the, the gaff party. Yeah. And all that stocking up for for a couple of days when you couldn't necessarily buy it, like so much stocking up for one day and there would be so much stocking up you know it'd be like oh my god holy thursdays case. i'm going to go watch people get their feet washed at mass and then i have to run them and get get my alcohol in you know it's like the black friday of yeah, yeah some some liquor sales i think that's amazing. I, yeah, I remember seeing that for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, oh, I don't know the I don't know the dates on this, but I think that um, alcohol wasn't allowed to be sold on St. Patrick's Day. Now it's it that that has been gone for it's a just... lot longer. <laughs> when they yeah, because obviously everybody wants to have a pint on St. Patrick's Day in Dublin, and things like that. But even voluntarily, the off licenses, well, I say voluntarily, they're strongly advised by, <laughs> by the Garda Siakana here that they should close until I think it's like six o'clock or five o'clock or something like that, you know, so that people don't do too much street drinking and things like that on St. Patrick's Day. Careful now care down with that kind of thing <laughs> oh. people are gonna do what they're gonna do yeah so yes. i think we have run our course here and we would love to hear if you know of any strange weird and wonderful beer laws we would love to hear about them because of this kind of stuff is fascinating and i actually i went into a massive wormhole there with the iceland <laughs> stuff <laughs> iceland utah like both are different but weird yeah mm. yeah completely so i think that's uh the end of this episode i am going to say thank you so much to my co-hosts bean and lisa um you can follow us on social media so we're on twitter as beer ladies pod and we're on facebook and instagram as beer ladies at beer ladies podcast we're on youtube uh youtube forward slash youtube.com forward slash beer ladies podcast you can buy us a coffee and you can also buy our merch go on lisa do your thing Woo. all right all right it, it, yay beer ladies. <laughs> our merch. so see you next time bye, bye. bye.